Okay, we've got the two rules from previously up here for rotating around the x-axis and the y-axis. We've got a question. The normal to the curve y equals e to the x at point B, where x equals 1, meets the x-axis at point C. The region bounded by the curve, there should be a word bounded in there, the region bounded by the curve y equals e to the x, the line BC, the x-axis and the y-axis is rotated 2 pi radians around the x-axis. What volume is generated? We've made a note that that's a symbol for radians, it's like the left-hand side of a degree sign, and 2 pi radians is a full turn. What do you think would be a good way to start this question? A diagram, yeah. Okay, a diagram. We've got the curve y equals e to the x. What does the curve y equals e to the x look like? What's its important points? Where does it cross? What shape is it? Does it exist everywhere? Does it not exist in some places? Close. Where does it not exist? I'm not going to bother drawing anything down here. No negative y bit. Okay. What point does it go through on the y-axis? When x is 0, e to the x will be e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1. Yeah. So it's like that, where that is the point 1 there on the y-axis. So we've got our curve here, y equals e to the x, it's just a sketch. So going back to the top of the question, the normal to the curve y equals e to the x at point b where x equals 1, so if I have over here somewhere a point where x equals 1, this point here on the curve is called point b. So. The tangent would be a line like that. The normal is a line that comes at right angles through there. And it said, find the right point. The normal to the curve at point B meets the x-axis at point C. So that down there is point C. Is that a straight line or a curve? That's a, that one there, the red one, is supposed to be a straight line. It's supposed to be a straight line. But I can't see a ruler nearby. Well, I can now. Right, so, then we've got the region bounded by the curve, the line BC, the x-axis and the y-axis. So what they're talking about here is this shape down here, this area down here, is rotated a full turn around the x-axis. What volume is generated? So we are spinning this area here all the way around the x-axis, to make a 3D shape, we want to know what volume we are going to get. Any suggestions on strategies for answering this question? Find the equation of the normal. That would be useful at some point. I guess we need to find out what this point down here is. And that's on the normal. Yep. Just looking at the area itself, we shaded in this area down here. What can you say about it? Sorry? Trapezium. That's supposed to be a curve there, okay? My poor drawing. So it's not a trapezium. Is it, does it have the same top line here as it does here? Because over here it's bounded at the top by the black curve and over here it's bounded by the red straight line. So it's in two bits. So what I would do is split it up down here and call this bit over here volume one and this bit over here, volume 2, and do them both separately, because they are different shapes defined by different curves. So if we're going to do volume 1, what's the formula, what's the red box rule that we're going to use for rotating anything around the x-axis? We wrote it down earlier. Integral of Pi y squared dx, yep, between our limits. What are the limits? What are our boundary points for v1? 0 and 1, yep. Okay. 
And what is y equal to? At, for that curve, what is y equal to over here in V1? E to the x. E to the x, that's right. So what is y squared equal to? Well, yes, e to the x all squared, and a power to a power, you times the powers together. So yeah, e to the 2x. So to get this volume, I'm integrating between 0 and 1 pi e to the 2x dx. I would take the pi, as it's just a number, straight through the integral sign. And now I've got to integrate e to the 2x. Does somebody tell me the integral of e to the 2x? Yeah, that's right, e to the 2x over 2. I'm integrating it between 0 and 1, and I mustn't forget that pi out there at the beginning. When you substitute in x is equal to 1, what do you get? Just from the rectangular brackets. When you stick in x equals 1. Yep, yeah, that's right. What do you get when you stick x substitute in x equals naught? Yeah, because you get here e to the naught, which is just one. So you're taking that off, and I've still got the pi there as well. Okay. Might as well write this over a common denominator of two. So it's e squared minus one over two times by pi. Okay, that is the volume you get from rotating that first V1 bit. Now, just to make the point here, this is supposed to be here a straight line. Okay. So if you look at this V2 being rotated around the x-axis, what will you get? A cone, yes. You will get a cone. V2, which is a triangle shape at the moment, when you rotate that around the x-axis, that will give you a cone. Okay? Do you know the formula for the volume of a cone? You either do or you don't. Okay. It's one-third pi r squared h. And that is now a really useful thing to learn. Okay. So the cone is going to look like that, where that was the x-axis, if you can sort of visualise that. So how would I describe this measurement here? What would that be in terms of the cone? Radius. That's the radius. Yeah, that red line there will be the radius. Okay. Uh, what else do I need to find out about this cone other than the radius? The height. The height will be that distance there from the bottom to its top. In terms of the diagram we had up here, because that triangle there is that triangle there, that's that V2 triangle, which is easier to work out, the radius or the height? Because the radius is this distance here, which is this distance here, it's that height of that line there. So the radius is the easiest one, yep, because the radius is that line there. How can I work out the length of that line? Yeah, put x equals 1 into the curve, that's right, okay. So the radius equals the dashed line I had on my diagram up here, and that is basically the height of the curve, the height of the curve y equals e to the x when x equals 1, because that is the value there. 
So that is going to give me e to the 1, or just e. Okay, so the radius is just e. So I'll write that down over here before I get, forget it. Radius equals e. So how am I going to go about working out the height? <coughs> In terms of this diagram over here, what do I need to find out the height? The of the line, yep, so that I can find the coordinate of C. And then, if I know the x-coordinate of C, take one away from it, I get the height. So that's right. So now we need to look at the line BC. What's the general equation of any straight line? Yeah, y equals mx plus c. Okay, where that m is the gradient. So how can I go about finding the gradient of the line BC? We sort of talked about it before we really started. So I will differentiate my curve, y equals e to the x. Okay, that's one point. Then what will I do after I've done that? What's the next thing I would do? That will give me dy dx. I wouldn't. Yeah, I will need. I need to substitute in my x value. Okay, uh, but you're right. Yeah. So sub in my x value. X equals one. And then what I'll need to do is do minus one over whatever that gave me to get the gradient of the normal. That's right. Okay. So, first of all, we're starting them with a curve y equals e to the x, and we've got to differentiate it. What do we get if we differentiate e to the x? e to the x. Okay. Substitute in x equals 1, and I get the gradient is e to the 1, or just e. So that is the gradient of the tangent. That's the tangent gradient. And we are after the normal <coughs> gradient. So, somebody said a minute ago, what do I need to do to that to get the gradient of the normal? Minus, Minus 1 over that, yeah. So that is the gradient of the normal. So that is what I'm going to put in my y equals mx plus c as my m value. So I've got y equals mx plus c. How am I going to find the value of c? Sorry? X and y values, yeah. Of what point? B. Yes, because b is on here. So if we use the point b, what is the coordinate of B? One. E. Yep, that's right. We had that earlier on, okay? The height of that is E. So the coordinate of B is 1 E. So if I substitute that in to here, I get Y equals minus 1 over E times by 1 plus C. So that whole thing there is just minus 1 over e. Take it to the other side, it becomes minus 1 over e there. Take it to the other side, it becomes positive 1 over e. Yep. So that's what c is. So my equation, my straight line, I can adapt where I'm pointing to at the top. And I can put in there c as well. So that is my equation of my line BC. So I'm trying to find out what this coordinate down here is at C. How am I going to find the coordinate of C? Put y equals 0. Yeah, it's on the x-axis. It has no height. So substitute y equals 0 into here. So I get 0 equals minus 1 over e x plus e plus 1 over e.
Right. I want to know what X is. What would be a good move here to find out what X is? I wouldn't do that yet, Ross. I wouldn't factorise it yet. I do want to get X on its own, so what would your first step towards that be? Could times out by E. I could just move that first of all, that bit there, onto the other side of the equal sign. Which gives me that. And then I'm going to multiply by E. I don't suppose the order really matters at all. So if I know times by E, on the left I'm just going to have X, and on the right, what will I have if I multiply through by E? E squared plus 1. Yeah. Okay. So I now know that the coordinates of C is its X value and its Y value. So that is its coordinate down here. Now why was I trying to find out that coordinate of C? Why was I trying to find out the coordinate of C? To get the height of the cone, yeah. That's right, okay. So, the height of the cone, I now know that that C there has an X value of E squared plus 1. That's the top of the cone. This 1 here is the bottom of the cone, so the height of the cone is those two things, a subtraction basically. So the height of my cone is e squared plus 1 take away 1 which reduces very nicely to e squared so I had earlier just to recap that the radius of my cone was e and I had also that the volume of the cone was one third pi r squared h. So I get now one third pi r squared is e squared times by h. h is also e squared. How can I write that down more simply? Sorry? Yeah, okay. Pi e to the power of 4 over 3. And that is the volume of V2, that bit we had on the right. I want the volume of the whole thing, which is equal to the volume of V1 plus the volume of V2. V1's volume, we worked out earlier, was e squared minus 1 over 2 times by pi. V2's volume is pi e to the 4 over 3 and that is the volume we get.